One of the biggest revolutions since the birth of the moving image was to have the ability to effectively move the image. To be able to put the viewer at the scene of the action, to follow the characters in transition enables the observer to be drawn into the narrative more effectively. In early cinema, camera technology forced the story to be shown from a series of static perspectives until technology was invented to make the camera more and more mobile, enabling more creative choices in framing. These options included a crane or a jib, essentially a seesaw with a weight on one end and a camera on the other, and a dolly, a cart on wheels that can be maneuvered either on or off a track, enabling smoother following shots. As camera technology improved, the equipment became smaller and more portable, enabling the camera operator to mount the camera directly on their shoulder. This turned the camera operator into the center of mobility, allowing more freedom and flexibility in the range of cinematic motion. The main objective then became, how can we make this kind of motion easy on the eye for the observer? How can we enable fluidity in movement, yet retaining stability and clarity in the shots to allow the audience to focus on the scene without being distracted by the movement of the shot? For example, following someone up and down stairs, running around, or even just walking down the street, would be a troublesome without costly, bulky and heavy specialist equipment that would require a lot of space to be effectively operated. This would limit the choices a director could make in deciding how to tell his story. In the early 70s, this problem was being addressed by a filmmaker and cameraman called Garrett Brown. I began to think that there has to be some way to isolate a camera which wants to move smoothly and a human being which is always in motion. There has to be some way to disconnect the camera from the human but let the human carry the thing because I loved handheld but I hated this. And so I started to chase how to separate person and camera. And I came out with the machine that you will see in this bit of film that I still have and there it is. There I am running around in a field exhilarated as hell because it actually works. In 1975, he was working on a film called Bound for Glory, which required a technically complicated camera maneuver, starting high up on a crane, then following the actor at ground level through the scene. The director of photography on the film persuaded the film director to try out this new form of technology. The shot was a great success, earning a standing ovation when the footage was shown to the crew in a screening room a few nights later. The Steadicam was born firmly establishing itself in the arsenal of equipment that could be utilized to show smooth range of motion in cinema. This technology was further utilized in notable films of the 70s, such as Marathon Man. It can be argued that no other technology of the day could have followed the lead so effectively in shots such as these, as it required smooth motion in a very limited space. One of the most distinctive early uses of the technology was in the film The Shining, directed by Stanley Kubrick, where Garrett Brown further expanded the technology to include low angle shots, essentially turning a Steadicam upside down so that the camera could be placed low to the floor. Since then, the equipment has been refined further, expanding to reach the financial range of the indie filmmakers and adding a handheld version for smaller cameras. The technology has been utilized in more and more inventive ways, combining the use of a Steadicam with a Segway, for example, for faster and more mobile tracking shots.